President Biden signed an executive order today to improve access to child care and better work life for caregivers as he makes a push to filter more money into the caregiver economy. But our next guest says caregivers still remain invisible from economic statistics. Misty Heganess, a University of Kansas associate professor of public affairs, joins us now. Misty, I know that you are working on an initiative that focuses on caregiving and household work that women do. Why is this an important issue which should be considered in official stats? Yeah, so Inez, thank you so much for having me today. And um, I just want to start by um, saying that I'm very appreciative of the Alfred P. Sloan Foundation for their generous funding for this project, for the Care Board project. Um, and I want to start by just saying that there's a lot of economic activity that happens within our economy um, that we're really not focused on reporting on and collecting statistics on. And what that means is that when we have um, epidemics like the pandemic, where um, a lot of folks are moving from outside formal labor market into their households, there's a lot of economic activity happening in households, and we're not really capturing any of it. And so we don't, we're not getting a full picture of our economy and, and how our economy is thriving and growing. Um, one example is in 2020, if you look at GDP, if you include um, economic activity that happened within households, uh, you know, that basically was the equivalent of about a fourth of the total US uh, official GDP. And so it's a big area of economic activity that um, we're really not focused on. And when you say economic activity, what exactly do you uh, mean? I mean, when we're talking about household work that uh, women do, uh, caregiving, um, there's, there's a lot in there. So uh, what, are, what are some examples of what, what economic activity is in the household? Yeah, so I mean, you know, if we want to unpack that, um, it includes things like caregiving of your children, making meals, washing clothes, cleaning. Um, it includes yard work and things that we do around the home. Um, all of these, uh, all of the activities that we do to kind of maintain ourselves as humans and help us thrive and, and live our best life um, happen within the sustaining care activity that that's going on within the home. And is it and it's economic activity. If we were to um, have somebody come in and clean our home, we would pay them for that and it would be counted within economic statistics. And so there's really um, a challenge here in terms of why we count it when uh, we have somebody come in and clean our home and we don't count it when we clean our home ourselves. And how do you quantify or measure this work? Yeah, so this is one of the areas um, where it does and it can get very challenging. And so essentially what economists would do in that instance is we would look at the time spent in these particular economic activities and we would look at the opportunity cost or what's the value of that person's time if they were to be doing something else. And so if somebody is staying home and taking care of their children, if somebody steps back from the labor market when they have children and, and takes care of their children in the home, what is the value of their wage that they would have had had they been in the labor market. And um, that's generally how we think about quantifying a lot of these activities. It's so fascinating. So it's basically the work that uh, one does at home for their household, their loved ones, their family members. But it's not necessarily, though, a work that if you bring in an outside nanny or if you bring in an outside cleaner, you're not necessarily counting that that's not going into these stats. Um, so, well, actually, if you are bringing somebody in from the outside and you're paying them, um, that's already counted within our kind of uh, official statistics on the economy. And so the challenge here is then how do we add in the value of individuals who are engaging in a lot of these activities, but for non-pay because it's a part of their family structure. Uh -huh. And one example where I think this is really important, and again, it refers back to the pandemic, is you had a lot of um, caregivers, particularly mothers who got really burnt out. And it wasn't, um, you know, par part of it was because they kept their regular full-time or part-time jobs and were doing that out in the formal economy. But in addition, they had a lot of additional responsibilities within the home. 
mothers got really burnt out and we weren't able to really accurately tell the economic story of caregivers during the pandemic because we really lacked the infrastructure and data around um, those stories in order to really understand um, the experiences of caregivers. And how will the data improve uh, wage gaps, the wage gap? Yeah, so, um, you know, a big part of the wage gap today is not due to kind of overt sexism in the in the labor market and in the workforce, although that still does happen to some extent. But a big portion of the wage gap today is due to something that we call the motherhood penalty, um, which is really focused on this idea that once women start having children, um, they pull back from the labor market for a short period of time. And that really puts a very strong negative impact on their lifetime earnings potential and their earnings in that moment and forward. And so one um, area where we can try to understand better why the motherhood penalty still exists and continues to um, hinder women's ability to um, thrive economically is if we're better at capturing the, the alternative amount of economic activity they're doing when they're not in their jobs, which is raising the next generation of workers, contributing to you know human capital and social development of society, which is so critical for a strong and thriving economy, and also critical for economic growth. And if we can get better at capturing and acknowledging and um, you know, compensating for this alternative types of economic activity that are so critical around care, uh, we might be able to figure out ways to mitigate some of the gender paid wage, wage gap. A lot to look into. Thank you so much, University of Kansas Associate Professor Misty Hagenes.